Something incredible has recently been discovered at the Grand Canyon, which has experts and researchers in amazement. This discovery has the potential to alter our understanding of the Earth's beginning and evolution. You won't believe what they discovered. It's something no one could have imagined, and it's rewriting all we thought we knew about this iconic natural beauty. So buckle up as we dive into this amazing adventure of discovery. The Grand Canyon was one of the first natural wonders of North America discovered by Europeans. In 1541, a group from the Coronado Mission, led by Captain Garza Lopez de Cardenas, stood on the South Rim. This was 138 years before explorers found Niagara Falls, 167 years before Yellowstone, and almost 300 years before Yosemite. Yosemite. A group scrambled down to the river but failed to reach it, returning to proclaim that the Buttes were considerably taller than Seville's Great Tower. Then there was nothing. Some Coronado chroniclers made no mention of the side journey at all. Francisco Tomas Garces, a Franciscan monk tracing tribes up the Colorado River, reached the rim in 1776, discovered the Havasupai tribe, and then left. Fur trappers in Taos were aware of the vast gorge, known as the Big Caon, and they avoided it. They guided exploratory parties of the United States Army Corps of topographic engineers in search of transit routes away from the canyon, which allowed no access by water or land. Lieutenant Joseph C. Ives then led a steamboat up the Colorado River in search of the Big Caon in 1857. Following the sinking of the steamboat in Black Canyon, Ives journeyed down Diamond Creek to the Inner Gorge, briefly stopped at the South Rim, and concluded in 1861 with one of the most infamous proclamations ever issued by an American explorer. Of course, the territory is completely worthless. There is nothing to do but leave once you've entered it. Ours was the first and no doubt the last white party to visit this unprofitable locale. Major John Wesley Powell descended the Colorado River through its gorges eight years later, renaming the Big Canyon the Grand Canyon and writing a classic account of the scene from the river. Captain Clarence Dutton provided an equally iconic account, this time from the rim in the first monograph released by the new United States Geological Survey in 1882. Something had altered. It was primarily the emergency of geology as a science with broad cultural appeal. The Grand Canyon may be worthless as a transportation corridor, but it was a wonderland for new research. It helped a lot because artists were drawn to landscapes and the canyon appeared to be both distinctive and dramatic. Thomas Moran and William Henry Holmes, prompted by Powell and Dutton, translated a supremely vivid picture into paint and ink. The Grand Canyon was a destination to avoid before Powell and Dutton. It was now a marvel to behold. Twenty years later, Teddy Roosevelt stepped off a train at the South Rim and declared it a natural wonder, absolutely unparalleled throughout the rest of the world. It was a stunning shift in perception. The canyon's geologic puzzle is how the south-trending Colorado River abruptly turned westward to carve a cross-grained path across four plateaus. This is also, to a large extent, what occurred culturally. Intellectuals challenged traditional aesthetics to create a compelling spectacle out of a region that looked nothing like pastorals or alpine slopes. Unlike other spectacular natural wonders, the Grand Canyon is not visible until you stand on its rim. You aren't pulled to it in the same way that you are to the source of a river or the pinnacle of a mountain. You must seek it out and then deal with the visual of epiphany. It simply and unexpectedly is. So Western society perceived it. As Dutton put it, while the sublimest thing on Earth, the canyon was a great innovation in our modern ideas of scenery, and appreciating a picture so strange to European sensibilities required the creation of a new aesthetic. It required its own canon of acclaim. The Grand Canyon stood on its own. Archaeologists have been trying to figure out how people lived in the past for a long time. The geological history of the Grand Canyon can be seen in the uncovered rock layers. Ancient people who lived along the Colorado River left behind ruins and other things that are mostly still hidden under the river's beaches. But from 2007 to 2009, scientists had a rare chance to dig in Grand Canyon National Park along the river. Don Kish, a photographer from Flagstaff, went with the crew to record the project. Her photos and the things they found are now on display at the Museum of Northern Arizona in an exhibit called Grand Archaeology. Over the course of 136 dirty days in the field, nine spots along or just above the Colorado River were dug up. It was the first big digging project in the Grand Canyon in almost 40 years. Even though the National Park has the policy to leave things like archaeological items alone, the Glen Canyon Dam upstream was causing erosion along the Colorado River, which was threatening to destroy the ancient sites. Since the dam was finished in 1963 and stopped river sediment from flowing into the Grand Canyon, the archaeological treasures that had been buried for hundreds of years under a lot of sediment and hidden from view, could now be seen. Lisa Leap, who was the project's lead archaeologist at Grand Canyon National Park, says that things were actually being washed down the river. Stone tools, pottery, jewelry, seeds, ash from hearths, and even a buffalo bone that was probably moved from somewhere else or found at the site. 
A kiva, which was possibly used for ceremonies, was found at a site where a lot of homes and trash dumps were dug up. Even though the project found evidence of people living in the Grand Canyon from Paleo-Indian nomadic hunter-gatherers to historic Southwest Native cultures, most of the findings were from a specific 250-year period between 1000 and 1250 AD, when ancestral Puebloan people lived and farmed along the Colorado River. In October 2007, on a hot day, an archaeologist moved a stone from the floor of an old room to find a pot that was still in perfect condition. People who lived here hundreds of years ago used this big ribbed pot to cook or store food. Now, it quickly got a lot of attention from archaeologists and their helpers. On an archaeological dig, every item is important to the story that eventually comes out, but even those who had worked in the field for years were excited by this find. This dig was part of an exciting project to find out more about the people who lived in the Grand Canyon before they left. Many of the places where people used to live along the Colorado River are now hidden, but safe, because sand from the river's sandy beaches has been blown over them by the wind. Most of the river's silt is now trapped by the Glen Canyon Dam. Because of this, the sand mounds and the sites are starting to break down. Archaeological sites are a treasure that cannot be replaced. When they go away, whether because of erosion, vandalism, or just the passing of time, they and the information they hold are gone for good. Together with the Museum of Northern Arizona and 11 Native American groups, Grand Canyon National Park has started the biggest excavation project in the park in almost 40 years. From 2007 to 2009, the park will start digging up nine of the most important spots along the river corridor. Archaeologists from the National Park Service found the pots in a big Puebloan site next to the river, and as they carefully dug through the rooms, they found things that told them about how people lived. People used the stone-lined hearths for cooking fires and the storage pits and mealing bins for grinding corn for dinner. Other things found at the site showed that the canyon was not a barrier, but rather a place where people lived as they went from place to place to get supplies. People who lived near the river grew corn, but pine nuts, juniper berries, and rabbit bones show that they also used resources from higher up in the canyon and on the hills. Still, no one knows where a bison leg came from. Different pots herds from different places show that pottery was made and traded both inside and outside of the canyon. Finally, a new study has shed light on many of the Grand Canyon's secrets. A mystery exists deep inside the Grand Canyon. One billion years worth of rocks have gone. The Great Unconformity has shaken the scientific community since it was first observed around 150 years ago. In a statement, Bara Peak, a geologist at the University of Colorado Boulder, said, Think of the Grand Canyon's red bluffs and cliffs as Earth's history textbook. By scaling the canyon's rock faces, you can travel nearly two billion years back in time. However, there are some blank pages in that textbook. In some areas, more than one billion years worth of rocks have vanished from the Grand Canyon without a trace. In a recent study, researchers led by Peak uncovered a possible cause for the missing rocks, the breakup of Earth's old supercontinent Rodinia some 700 million years ago. In the case of the Grand Canyon, the upheaval was so violent that it almost definitely washed one billion years worth of rocks and silt into the ocean. In 1869, John Wesley Powell discovered the Great Unconformity while sailing down the Colorado River, which carved Arizona's Grand Canyon. It was one of the first well-documented, fascinating geologic features in North America, according to academics. Peak and her team went on a similar journey to Powell's in the spring of 2021, and they witnessed the same spectacular barrier between Grand Canyon rock layers visible from the river. At various locations along the canyon, the researchers discovered 1.4 to 1.8 billion-year-old rocks lying beneath much younger 528 million-year-old rocks. There are some beautiful lines, Peak said. At the bottom, you can clearly see that rocks have been pushed together. Their layers are vertically stacked. Then there's a cutoff, followed by these wonderful horizontal layers that form the Grand Canyon buttes and peaks. Peak and her colleagues used thermochronology to trace the history of rock heating in order to probe deep into the geological past of the Grand Canyon. When rocks are buried far down, the immense pressure that builds up on top of them causes them to heat up. In turn, this toasting leaves a chemical footprint of minerals in the rock that exposes information about the heating's history. Peak and her colleagues investigated rock samples from all across the Grand Canyon and discovered that the Great Unconformity's history may be more intricate than previously imagined. According to to the experts, the eastern and western sections of the canyon may have undergone distinct geological contortions over time. It's not a single block with the same temperature history, Peak clarified. According to the researchers, when Rodinia, the supercontinent that preceded the more famous Pangaea, broke apart 700 million years ago, a series of minor faulting incidents occurred. The spectacular faulting most certainly ripped up the ground around the canyon, washing rocks and debris into the sea. The basement rock in the Grand Canyon's western half appears to have broken through to the surface 700 million years ago 
whereas the identical stone in the canyon's eastern half is buried behind kilometers of sediment. According to the study's findings, the upheaval may have torn at the Grand Canyon's eastern and western parts in various ways and on slightly different dates, resulting in the construction of the Great Unconformity. The team's results are helping to improve knowledge of what happened during this critical time period for the Grand Canyon and other areas in North America that have endured similar periods of lost time. For many years to come, the Grand Canyon will likely elude explorers and geologists. We have most certainly only scratched the surface of the canyon's mysteries due to its vastness. Every day, scientists uncover new discoveries, and this time, more than 300 million year old fossilized footprints were discovered in the United States' iconic Grand Canyon National Park. These imprints may reveal information about how people lived millions of years ago on Earth. Researchers from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas have published a comprehensive report on fossil tracks discovered near a hiking trail in the park. According to research studies, these tracks could be 313 million years old and are possibly among the oldest animal tracks currently in existence. Scientists are still debating whether or not these were egg-laying creatures. It's a significant discovery that could help scientists determine when animals first began walking on sand dunes and when they first began laying eggs outside of water. Some of the results are likely to be controversial, said Mark Nebel, director of the Grand Canyon's paleontology department. Scientists don't always agree on how to read tracks, determine the age of rocks, and most importantly, determine what kind of animal left these imprints. The claw marks in the rock are quite visible and are commonly found on reptiles today. This is one of the key reasons why researchers believe the tracks were formed by egg-laying species. According to Steve Rowland, a retired geology professor, I think our interpretations will hold up very well. The rock's currently located near the Bright Angel hiking route. Scientists are currently attempting to determine how to mark the rock on the trail, or better yet, how to relocate it to a local center or museum so that it may be studied further. Previously, scientists and researchers discovered similar traces on other types of land on Earth. So there you have it on the discoveries of the Grand Canyon. If you're as intrigued as we are by these discoveries, click the bell icon to stay up to date on all the newest developments. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling time travel adventures, and until next time, keep exploring, and thanks for watching.